with Buffalo's uh, model of rebuilding, mm -hmm. and you, you've spoken to Sean and, and uh, Brandon, just um, what did you take from your conversations with them, and was there anything different about their rebuilding process than what you guys did in Carolina when you built it from the ground up? Not necessarily, other than, you know, they didn't get their quarterback till the second year. And so, you know, but, but really, the, to me, looking at what they've done, the way they've done, they've been very methodical. They've had a plan. They stuck to the plan. They did the things that they've needed to do. They put players in place. You know, he doesn't have a lot of turnover on his coaching staff, you know, stuff like that. I, I mean, you know, that's the thing that, that you look at and you appreciate is, is that the continuity that's there. And, and, and again, it's very similar to what we did when we all were together and started with Andy. I mean, this all goes way back, you know, to, to 1999. You know, because we all, you know, Sean and I and, and Leslie Frazier and you know, guys that are on that staff, we all started with Andy. And so we all learned from him. And, and so a lot of things that we do are very similar. And why do you think that model has had success in so many different places now around the NFL? Because it's a plan. Um, and it's, 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 it's been proven to, to be successful. I mean, you know, let's don't forget Andy started, you know, in Green Bay and, and, and those Green Bay roots with Coach Holmgren go back to San Francisco and San Francisco under Bill Walsh. So it's just kind of an extension of what that tree has been. And I think because it's been a proven model, you know, it, it, it's, it's not the West Coast offense per se as much as it's the West Coast way of doing things. And, and that's having a plan and, 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 you know, preparing for every situation and circumstances. Did you see any new tweaks or ways to change that model this offseason, maybe even beyond you know, the players you targeted or, or things that you were looking at? Not necessarily. I think you know, looking at what we want to do and how we want to do it, you know, the decision was really were we going to try and, and invest heavily in a quarterback or were we going to continue to keep putting the places in place and then go from there? And how do you feel like the pieces have, have been developing to, to then be – you just surround that quarterback when you find him. Well, I think they're falling into place nicely. You know, um, I, I think, again, to me, the, the big thing for us is to make sure, you know, we're doing things the right way. We're playing to our abilities. You know, we, we feel good about the players that we have. Now it's a matter of us getting them coached up so that they go out and they play to the best of their abilities. With Jamin Davis, that position specifically, how difficult is that? for a rookie just to be able to play the mic and every, all the responsibilities that come into it? Well, it's difficult, um, you know, and, and you know, the, the big thing for us looking at where he came from and the things that he did are, are, are comparably, comparably different than what he's used to. So he's, you know, trying to learn a new style and new techniques, understanding not just what, you know, what he has to do, but as much as truly understanding what's happening in front of him. You know, the game is a little bit different when you take a step up um, and so, so some of the things that we ask him to do are, are new to him, and, and he's learning those techniques. You know, he played well last week. He really did. He took a nice step, and, and it was very good to see. Leslie Frazier, I uh, know he said that he was the one that convinced you to go into coaching. Is that true? Yep. Leslie, Leslie tried to hire me a couple of times when he was in, uh, in, um, in Illinois when he was coaching there. He started a, uh, out at a program small program he was trying to get me to come out and do it and um you know I was still kind of reluctant and 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 then when I decided to he and I ended up on on the same staff with uh with Andy so you know I got a lot of a lot of history with him hey, Ron as you said you went back you guys go back to Andy which goes back to the Bill Walsh here and all that but was there something that else that you learned in talking to Sean when you were doing the research with that that maybe he did that put a little twist on it that maybe you grew to you know that maybe made sense to you, or is this more affirmation? No, I think the biggest thing is Sean's very, very, very methodical. He plans very well. He sticks to his plan. Um, he will adjust if he has to. I, I mean, you know, and, and again, it, a lot of it is is our upbringing in the league, and I think that's that's very important. You know, when when I got an opportunity to to, to have Sean uh, on my staff in Carolina, the one thing I, I I told him and stressed him is, hey, let's build it. Let's build let's build this ourselves. And I was very fortunate to have him as long as I did because he did a heck of a job. He really did. And, and, and to me, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you know, we started with Andy. We learned, you know, his, his way of doing things. And, and we've stuck pretty much to it. Now, we have our own tweaks, our own personalities to it. But the, the bones of it, uh, the, 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 the infrastructure, you could trace it all the way back to coach. And in the defense, we've talked a lot about the undisciplined play and all that. 
what are some of the things that you've seen that you say, hey, build on this? Like, what are some of the things that maybe jumped out in a, in a positive way that you want to build on going forward? Well, it, to me, it's really when you put the tape on and, and, and you see the things that happen, and when a guy isn't where he should be, that's easy instruction, you know? And, 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 and so the example's blurring. I mean, it's there. Um, but then when you do it right and you watch the ball and, and, and you watch the runner and he's going downhill and all of a sudden he, that's plugged, he tries to bounce, that's plugged, and then next thing you know, he tries to reverse his field and it just collapses on him. Now you put that up and you show the guys, you know, see what happens. Um, and, and it's interesting because when, when we do that, when I listen to the guys talk about it, you know, and, and hear them, you know, the realization is, okay, okay, I, yep, yep, if I'm where I should be, yep, that's exactly what happens. So that's, you know, as I, as I said to you guys, it's all fixable. It really truly is. You know, if it wasn't fixable, if we weren't good enough, uh, I wouldn't be as frustrated as I get at times because, you know, this is a good football team. It really is. And, and, and when you bring back as many guys you've had that should know, you should be getting ready to take another step. And, and that's, what I, that's what I expect to see from us as we go forward. Uh, Ron, at receiver, you've largely been going with uh, Terry, uh, Diami, and Adam as your top three with Cam Sims behind there. He played a little bit more this week, Cam Sims, but not uh, far beyond the, behind those guys. He obviously finished very strong last year. Where does he kind of fit in with the, the rotation right now? I know you can't play everybody at all the times, but where does he kind of fit in right now? Well, I, I think the thing is we, we, we got to get him on the field a little bit more. You know, and, and, and that's the truth of the matter. And I, and I know they've talked about it. The coaches have talked about that. You know, it's, it's, it's as you get started and you, you make adjustments. I mean, the first week we didn't use JD as much. Second week it was a conscious effort. Next thing you know, it's all of a sudden a realization, oh, man, that's right, that's what we do. You know, I mean, those first couple of, of, of games, there's learning experiences just as much for us. We know who we have, but, you know, let's make sure we're using them. You know, um, and, and if you look at the big difference from the first week to the second week, look at how many different guys got the ball thrown to them. And when, when you look at that, you'll see that there's a huge difference. And, and to me, that's important. That, 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 I think, is what helps keep our offense diverse is who's touching it and how many different people are. And when you say, like, you, you look at it and say, oh, yeah, that, that's what we do. We've got to get these guys more involved. Obviously, you guys have conversations during the week. Is it like we have a plan, but once the game starts, it kind of maybe doesn't get away from it, but you have to react to what's happening? Or is it just literally? Well, you, you, I mean, if you start a game, you're feeling good about what you do. I mean, like the first game against Charts, we felt good about running the ball. We thought we ran the ball well. We thought we did some good things. And, and, then, and, and at one point, we were feeding Antonio. You know, we were getting the ball in his hands. And, and so you, you look at that, and sometimes you roll with that. Uh, and I think, though, you know, a little bit of what we learned uh, is that when we're diverse, when we keep it spread out, um, we can be pretty good, too. Looking at Taylor's past, I don't think he's played really significantly on the road at all. Do you think that could be something new for him to adjust to, or are you not anticipating too much of an impact for him? No, I, I don't expect an impact. I don't, I don't think it should be that big a, de a deal. Um, you know, uh, again, I think that I'd classify that under the interesting. Um, you know, to him, it's really about being on the field and playing on the field. Um, you know, he's 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 played a lot of football in his past in terms of what he did collegiately and then some of his opportunities coming up. But yeah, this is his first real big shot. But like I said, that to me, that's interesting. And as for the taunting, it seemed like that was another big storyline this weekend. Are you constantly reminding your guys about that, or are you just kind of letting them? No, we talked about it, you know. But but I think the thing that everybody can understand that the idea behind the taunting rule is is to prevent the bigger things. Okay, we we've had this example where one guy taunts a guy, and then the guy comes back for, for a little payback, and next thing you know, you got a big fight on your hands. You got guys coming from left field, hitting each other, you know, and and that's really what 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 you're really to me. I think the referees are really looking for. They're just trying to get it quieted down, and and that's really what's. I mean, you can do the celebration. They sent a tape out and explained exactly what's taunting and what's not, and, and I think if you look at the tape and you follow the tape, then then it makes sense. I mean, I, I'm all for the celebration. Remember, we were the 2015 team that, 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 that everybody was mad at because we were dabbing and stuff like that, and taking pictures on the sideline. But, you know, so it's about you, you want these guys to keep their personality. You want them to be who they are because these guys are explosive players that make dynamic plays. But what we're, the intent is so that somebody doesn't do something that gets somebody to come back with a little retribution. You don't want that. You don't want, you know, somebody out for revenge. 
that's what we're trying to prevent. And, and again, you know, we, we, whether we want to or not, we are examples. Okay, we're role models. So if you're going to do something, do it within the rules. You know, get up and, and, and do your, 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 your ball drop. You know, do your dab or your dance or whatever. But don't do it towards somebody. You know, don't, don't step over somebody and, and drag your leg over somebody. Uh, that's, that's what we're trying to prevent. You can do all, I mean, guys intercept it, run all the way down to the other end zone. That's fine. Okay? Th those things, you know, we're, we're not trying to stop the players from having fun. We're just trying to make sure we don't end up with a brawl on our hands. Because that's ugly. We don't want that. It's a, this is a great sport. We've got a great fan base. People enjoy watching the games. And, and, and there are some who like watching the fights. But we don't need the fights. We really don't. We don't need anybody getting hurt unnecessarily. Ron, you mentioned the fact that the pathway that you know Bill Walsh has set up, Andy Reid has set up, it's very tried and true. I believe, with Andy, you guys went to the NFC Championship your second season together in Philadelphia. And obviously, with Sean, they went third. It was third. It was 2001, right? Yeah. OK. Um, and then with Sean, he obviously, he went to the playoffs his first season, AFC Championship this last year. You, where do you feel Washington is in that? You're following this model. You said it's very trying to. You guys went to the playoffs. Where do, you guys, <laughs> where do you guys feel like you are there? And how far do you feel like maybe until you see that level of success here? Well, I think we're trending, you know. Um, and, and it may not be reflected all the time the way people want it to be reflected. But as long as we're growing, developing, and, and we're feeling good about what we're doing and we're understanding what, what it takes, we're headed in the right direction. I, I believe that. Um, and, you know, I don't expect things to happen overnight. I, I really don't. I mean, last year was a little bit, little, little odd. The whole year was odd. Um, no, but, but, you know, I try to remind myself too, you know, that, that we're building, we're in a process. You know, we have to stick to the process. We have to stick to, 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 to really pretty much what the plan is. And so we'll see how it goes. Jack said he was very excited about this particular schedule because you have a number of these tier one quarterbacks that you're going to see. Josh Allen obviously would fall into that category. What are you, I suppose, most excited about seeing from your team, or what do you expect to learn from your team facing the Buffalo Bills, considering they did just play in the AFC Championship game last year? Well, I, I, first of all, I think they're a measuring stick. You know, when, when you talk about teams that have opportunities every year now to, to, to compete and, and do some great things, this is one of them. So you should measure yourself to the great teams in, in, in this league right now, the teams that are really, really good. So that's how we feel. We feel like we're, we're coming up against a measuring stick and really kind of see you know, where we are and how, how far we have to go. Thanks, Ron, with um, Antonio on Thursday night, there were a couple of three and one, uh, third and ones, uh, I should say, in the first half. One, he seemed to hesitate and kind of try and find a hole. One, he hit hard and got the first down ultimately, may have been stopped, whatever. Um, what are they taught, or what do you guys want them to do if something is bottled up in a short yardage situation? Is it to hesitate and try and find, or is it just to hit the hole and try and move the pile forward? Well, for the most part, the, the, the runner has a, uh, has, has a landmark. And based on that, that's where he should be working towards. Okay, and if it, if, if it looks cloudy, it looks murky, you still head for your landmark. And, 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 and really, some guys do have the ability to create stutter step, cause a little, you know, pause a little bit and find a crease. And sometimes, you know, a, a guy will just put his, you know, put his face into the mix and, and just go downhill. Um, you know, you want him to do what, you know, what, what, what he's taught, but there's also some things that you say are, are natural and, and instinctual. And sometimes you, you just, you know, you, just, you go with it. Go back to the Leslie Frazier thing for a minute. Why didn't you want to go into coaching, and what would you be doing now if you had resisted? Um, initially, I, I didn't because I kind of felt like I really wasn't as far removed as I, I felt like I needed to be. Um, at that point, honestly, I hadn't missed the game as much. Um, but then in a couple of years when I started watching it again and, and really you know, following it, I, that's when I realized how much I loved the game. You know, it's, it's, it was one of those things. If, if Leslie had come up to me at that point in time, probably. But early on, I just, I don't think I was ready to. I think I wanted to take a little step back and breathe a little bit and kind of, you know, find my way. And I, I think I did. Um, you know, a big part of it, too, was at the urging of my wife. You know, she really told me, you don't have a lot of direction right now. You need to get back into football because I know you miss it. And that's really what happened. You know, Leslie was pushing for me to do it. And... Um, you know, and I saw as I saw Leslie start to progress, I realized, you know what, I can do the same thing. 
All right, cool. Thank you, guys.